there's not really any other way to say this, but dang, Kentucky just got lit up by South Carolina. You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Sometimes you have it, sometimes you don't. What's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on into Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast, we take a dive into all things Kentucky Athletics. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can make every moment more, and right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when they place a $5 bet. You can visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we're going to be recapping Kentucky basketball's uh, destruction at the hands of the South Carolina Gamecocks. Going to talk about some things that we discussed on yesterday's show, maybe bring some things back into light that I've been saying for a few weeks now. Going to talk about how this one shapes uh, uh, out in the grand scheme of things. What does Kentucky do moving forward? Because they they got rocked uh, tonight, and there's not really any other way to put it. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first to listen every single day. I want to remind everyone out there that we are free and available on all platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the show. And if you're listening on podcast, would appreciate it if you subscribed there as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. The things that went wrong in Kentucky basketball's 79-62 to loss to the South Carolina Gamecocks. There are a lot of different ways that we could go to start this individually uh, and taking a step back and looking at the big picture here in this game. I'm going to start with the offense uh, for Kentucky. It was was out of sync uh, in that first half. Part of it had to do with the fact that South Carolina played some really good defense. Part of it had to do with the fact that Kentucky could not get in rhythm because they kept shooting themselves in the foot And it was honestly confusing to watch. Some of the decisions that Kentucky was making early on in this game were dumbfounding. No other way to put it. The way that they pushed the ball in transition, the decisions that they made driving to the hole or shooting uh, from outside the paint were just simply, I would, they were just simply, they were not the right decision to make. We'll just say that. And it wasn't just one Wildcat, it was a bunch of them. It was the entire team just not being able to settle in for the entirety of this game, obviously, but especially in that first half, just not finding any sort of rhythm whatsoever. And that sort of sparked South Carolina's uh, run here in the second half was Kentucky's ability inability to get a stop or two on defense. The offense running into a brick wall and immediately coughing it up on the other end. Not necessarily a turnover, but just a very quick one-and-done type of trip. And then South Carolina responding on the other end of the floor very quickly with their fast break. Um, or or just simply able to respond. And um, it, it kind of put Kentucky away in that second half. They were down, I want to say, by three or four uh, early in the second half. And then South Carolina just blew the game wide open. And it starts with me in my mind with this offense. Their inability to to make shots. 62 points out of a unit that averages over 90 a game. It's uncharacteristic. It's not normal. So why did Kentucky step out of their comfort zone today? Why did they score only 62 points? I think the shot selection was awful. If we're going to talk about what Kentucky did to themselves here first, I think the shot selection was awful. You know how we feel about mid-range shots on this show. You know how I continue to say about 10 to 15% of your shots should be from the mid-range. You shouldn't be shooting a ton more than that, at least not consistently, because, you know, if you do the math, three points are more worth more than two. And if you can get an outside shot by taking a step back or running a different play, I would absolutely advise you do that, especially if you hit from outside the arc the same amount that you do from that mid-range area. Or if you don't want to take that three-point shot, you could always step into the painted area, 
where you are statistically more likely, almost significantly more likely to make that two-point shot that's worth the same amount of points. The mid-range shot should be in the game, no question. That's why they have a they why they have a mid-range area to begin with. But shooting 20 shots from the mid-range, which is what I counted after looking at the shot chart for this one, and only making 8 of those shots is inefficient. 40% on two-pointer on two-point shots is just simply not good. You should be shooting 45% or higher. You should really shoot, be shooting towards 50%. And if we're looking at Kentucky's averages this season, from two, they shoot 55.8%. 40% doesn't cut it. A 16% dip does not cut it. And the funny thing about this is Kentucky, on average this year, shoots an even 40% from deep. And that's what they shot for mid-range shots that are worth a point less. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not going to win yourself a lot of basketball games even with the greatest personnel in this in this game, in college basketball, if you continue to shoot the type of shots that Kentucky shot tonight, they, they shot themselves into a lull. And South Carolina came into this game with an extremely aggressive game plan. They played very physical on defense. Was the officiating bad? I think the officiating was subpar. Was it was the South was South Carolina's defense getting away with a ton of things? No. I don't think so. I think that South Carolina played really good defense. Now the officials weren't calling anything for the majority of the game on either side of the ball. But I think that uh I think that South Carolina just manhandled Kentucky on that end of the floor, to be honest with you. They they it, it's it's similar to the Will Wade defenses of LSU a couple of years ago. And we've done shows on those on those uh, teams, by the way, where they when you go to drive the ball, the defense puts both hands on you, gets physical, and will contest your shot in a way that could be called a foul. And it's just up to the officiating crew as to whether or not they decide to be ticky-tacky that night or if they decide to let the guys play. And tonight, you saw very early, calls weren't being made. So it leads to a long afternoon. Kentucky's got to be able to step up and reciprocate that on the defensive end. And they don't currently seem to have that type of dog in them. Now, the offense, I think, is fine. I think the outlook for this season is fine. Nothing really changes tonight after this loss to South Carolina. My opinion on this team does not change. It's just, you know they can be better. You know those mid-range shots often are made more often. What a stupid way to say that. You know that Kentucky doesn't take those type of shots that often. You know they don't rush threes and transition a ton. You know they find open looks consistently. You know they don't flounder around the rim and take these wild kind of floaters where you're kind of floating, pulling away from the basket because you don't want to take the contact or get blocked. Kentucky doesn't normally do that. Tonight, South Carolina threw Kentucky out of rhythm. The officiating wasn't great on either end, and South Carolina played like the more physical basketball team while also going off on offense, which is something that they normally don't do. And I want to kind of talk about more of that in a second. So on on yesterday's show, we had a conversation about does the defense actually matter? Andrew Stefaniak and I had the same conversation last week. If Kentucky's scoring 90 a game, does it really matter that their defense has given up a ton of points. And there's some there's some truth to that. And I, I did an episode yesterday essentially saying, yeah, if Kentucky continues to do this, then it's not going to really matter. And then you have nights like this, immediately after we have that conversation, where it's Kentucky's offense that shuts down, slips up, and the defense is as is. Didn't really change. Looked bad, per usual. Do things like this happen to national title contenders? Does the defense actually, actually matter? We're going to have that conversation again and do all of that in just a second. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at FanDuel. The NFL regular season has wrapped up. We are almost done with the NFL season, which is wild to say, in the thick of the NBA as well. 
Uh, time to get on, in on the action with FanDuel in the playoffs with America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with FanDuel guaranteed when they place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets. Win or lose in the app is super easy to use. So many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. They've got a parlay hub where you can find all of the different popular parlays that people are taking a look at. So much more on top of that. You need to visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet a layup. That is FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. All right, continuing along here on the Tuesday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. Again, I really appreciate you tuning in to Locked On Kentucky today. If you have not subscribed to the channel or the podcast feed wherever you are tuned in, please do that. Would be great to have you on as we continue here through the SEC slate. And defeating loss tonight, frustrating loss tonight, um, but I think that the, the outcome on the season doesn't really change for me after this one, and I know it's kind of weird to say. I still think Kentucky's on path to win 14, maybe even 15 games if they can somehow miraculously focus up on offense, or excuse me, on, on defense. And so that's where we'll transition here. Kentucky gave up 79 points. Was a le- and and it was it was South Carolina's three ball that really killed UK. USC shot ended up shooting fifty or excuse me forty eight percent from the floor, fifty five percent in the second half, forty five point eight percent from deep. They were eleven of twenty four from beyond the arc, eleven of twenty four. It was uh it was a poor night for Kentucky basketball with their perimeter defense. Part of it was the fact that South Carolina was shooting the lights out. Jacoby Wright, one of their guards, shoots, I think, 22% from three. He made his first four three-point shots. He was four of seven on the day. Johnson had two three-pointers. Cooper had two three-pointers. B.J. Mack, their big man, who was three of 12 from the floor, still hit two three-pointers. It was just a rough night for Kentucky's defense where they just cannot, you you identify the weaknesses here. The defense as a whole has struggled. Kentucky at times cannot protect the rim. They have height. They don't necessarily have a ton of weight down low. And South Carolina took advantage of that at times, or at least tried to. And they got bodied. And then, in turn, they also struggle to fight through ball screens. They struggle whenever the ball is being moved around the floor and opposing teams are looking for outside shots. Kentucky, far too often, overhelps or doubles, leading to open shots or leading to the stress, uh, the further stress of, a de- of the defense. We're what, 18 games in now? Over halfway through the season? Kentucky's not figuring it out. We've identified the weaknesses here. Okay? Kentucky's defense stinks. There is no other way to put it. They are now at 94th in adjusted defensive efficiency. Statistically, still not terrible in a variety of uh, of statistics. That's another dumb way to say that. But in term, in relative to the conference that they're in, it's bad. Relative to the top half of the conference that they're in, it's bad. So whenever whenever we say this team, this top twenty five team is not good at this, that, or the other, they suck at this, they stink at this. It usually is not that they stink or suck at something. It's that they're not good at it relative to the best of the best. They're not good at it relative to other good teams in their realm of play. Kentucky's defense is poor compared to the best in this conference. That offense is still very, very good. It just had an off night. I think we can chalk it up to that. South Carolina played more physical. 
Kentucky couldn't get in a rhythm on offense, and they made dumb decisions. The defense has been that way and was that way again tonight. Do national title contenders have that poor of a showing on defense in the regular season consistently and then go on to win the Natty, make a run in the NCAA tournament? Kentucky has got to find a way to get stops more consistently, and the way that they play the game does not allow them to do that easily so they have to be able to kind of work a little bit of a miracle here. You're over halfway through the year. Your defense is bad. Title contenders don't have the this bad of uh, this bad of a defense. You have to be able to fix it. They still haven't fixed it. I don't think they're going to fix it entirely. I don't know. You you're you are sitting in a rough rough spot. Because I don't think things like this happen to teams that are standing in the confetti and what? Is it being held in Phoenix this year? Teams that are standing in the confetti in Phoenix, Arizona in March. This doesn't happen to them. And then I guess that allows us to kind of briefly revisit the conversation. Does the defense actually matter? And I think what Stefaniak and I kind of came to the conclusion on, would the defense be improving help? This team a lot? Absolutely. It'd make them look more dominant. Computer ratings would love them a lot more and give us more confidence and the team themselves more confidence in what they can do in the, in the uh, NCAA tournament. But if they score 90 a game, it doesn't really matter. Of course, you could have that one game where you shoot poorly in the tournament. I think I even said that on, on the episode. And then you're done. Like, bye-bye. You couldn't shoot well. Your defense gave up, what, 75 points, 77 points? Congratulations. You're done. Get out. So the defense, to an extent, does actually matter. As far as this regular season goes, I still think this offense is going to carry the load. I think it's going to bring them to a top four seed in this league. I think they're they're still one of the four best teams in this conference, if not one of the best two. That's going to be determined by how they play Tennessee and Auburn and Alabama, I guess, if you you do want to throw them in there. Uh, But the, the defense matters when you talk about the the final picture. You, when you look at the the slate here and you look up and down, I don't know if you'll see another another game where Kentucky is this bad on offense. I really don't. You're going to see maybe every single game left on the slate where Kentucky's this bad on defense. And so you have to be able to choose or I guess guess, okay, how are you going to perform against these quad one teams? Are you going to be able to pick up that big resume building win? Are you going to be able to beat Tennessee in a couple of weeks? Are you going to be able to beat Gonzaga, which is just smack in the middle of your conference slate? Hey, are you going to be able to go on the road and hold Auburn? Are you going to be able to hold Alabama at home? You could, Shoot, are you going to be able to do it on Saturday against Arkansas? Who's not a good team, but you're still probably going to give up 80. Right? It's it it it's it's not going to be fixed. It needs to be fixed. And I, I think it will at the end of the day possibly be something that kills this team, despite being so so good on one end of the floor. They'll 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 win the they'll win the, the games at home. They'll win their games at home. They'll win a couple of games on the road that they that they probably shouldn't. Or, you know, are projected to, to be competitive in and then just they'll, they'll blow the, the opponent out because their offense is that good. But whoo, um, that that defense. It's, it's got it's got Kentucky in a had Kentucky in a in a headlock tonight. They themselves had them had themselves in a headlock tonight. So I think that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore and follow the show over on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the YouTube comments below. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. 
and God bless. Thank you.